Well, it's time to do the honors and to launch Green Dreams. I'd like to invite the author, Mr. C.B. Ram Kumar, Mr. Indranil Roy, CEO, Outlook Group, and Mr. Amitabh Kant, CEO, Niti Aayog, and of course, the force behind Incredible India and Make in India campaign, among others. Gentlemen, may I please invite you on stage to do the honors, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Green Dreams! It's a lifetime of learning in that book. Well, all the best to Mr. Ram Kumar. Thank you, Mr. Roy and Mr. Kant. May I please request you to stay back? You've had a long experience with tourism and we'd love to hear your views and your, you know, what you feel about the future of sustainable and responsible tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Amitabh Kant. Indra Neel, uh, Ram Kumar, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here to release uh, Mr. Ram Kumar's book, uh, The Green Dreams, which is based on his own personal experiences of uh, building our native village and learning from its own experiences. So this is a unique contribution that he's uh, leaving behind. And of for all of us to benefit from it. So let me first compliment Ram Kumar for uh, putting it all down for future generations. Uh, and let me also compliment Outlook Traveler Group and Outlook Traveler and Indranil in particular for this great initiative of responsible tourism. Uh, you know, it's, I think Outlook is the only group which has put such immense focus, such energy, such vibrancy, and such dynamism behind driving responsible tourism. Because to my mind, that is really the future. Uh, we must understand that uh, the world of tourism is all about giving back to the nature. You know, when I took over Kerala tourism many years back, we used to have charter full of flights coming into Kovlam. They used to come in from UK and they used to, a uh, huge number of charters used to come and this was all mass tourism. And actually mass tourism had led to, uh, you know, illegal encroachments. It had led to the one unique product of Kerala, the Kovlam beach being totally devastated. So tourists were coming in, spending about $25 a night for a product which was the most beautiful beach, a lovely sunshine uh, uh, where you would give anything. But it was just mass tourism at its best. And every year, charter operators used to pay in advance so that more illegal construction could be done. And actually, to my mind, most people do not realize this, but tourism has actually destroyed several cultures, it has destroyed several destinations. And therefore, you know, in 2011, the World Tourism Organization got one of the most leading experts in tourism, a German, called Stresnake, to do a survey. And he'd done this survey in 1990s. He looked at the top 1% of the traveler, the most uh, rich, affluent, the most expensive travelers of the world. And he looked at about 10,000 of these topmost travelers and he asked them, what do you want to do when you want to travel? And in 1990, they had all said, about 95% of them had said that they want to go and experience sun, sand, and sea, what was then known as triple S, uh, sun, sand, and sea. 
And then, you know, in 2011, he did a survey of the same 1%, 1% upper end of the market, the rich and affluent travelers, the rich and famous segment. And he asked them exactly the same question. Where do you, what do you want to do when you want to travel? And, you know, by that time, almost 84% of them said that they want to travel to a destination where, which is extremely experiential, where they can learn about a culture, where they can see the society as it exists, and where they can give back something to the destination. And the world had totally moved from sun, sand, and sea to responsible and experiential tourism. You know, the people by that time, in that about 12, 13 years, the top end travelers all wanted to go and see a destination as it existed and want to contribute something to that local culture. People had by that time moved away from the five star world. They had moved away from anything which was not authentic. And therefore, you know, one of the key things which I did as Secretary of Tourism was to go back to the roots of Kerala. So because Kovalam had been devastated, we stopped to mass tourism and we stopped charter flights. But we went back and brought in Kerala as it existed. And our basic philosophy was that we'll do everything but not ape the West. So we went back and rediscovered the traditional Kerala architecture, which were where houses were being destroyed and burned uh, for, as firewood. So we brought back the traditional Kerala architecture called the Nalkitam. And actually that became, uh, many of the beach resorts were actually made with the traditional Kerala architecture. We brought back the traditional Kerala martial art, which is the mother of all uh, uh, martial arts, culinary pet. We brought back all the traditional art forms of Kerala, from Kathakali to Otantulal to all the top art forms of Kerala. Uh, we brought back the traditional Kerala cuisine. So all that you get now, stew and fish moily and etc., all died out. We brought them back. But more important than anything else, one of the key things we did was to convert poachers into guides in Peria Game Sanctuary. We supported them for about first six months financially from Kerala tourism. And then we realized that actually these poachers are much better than any tourism guide. They know the forest better than anyone else. Uh, but their problem was financial. So you had to support them in advance. We supported them for six months and then they went back to becoming poachers. And then we supported them for five years. And actually they became some of the finest guides. Uh, and Periyar actually became a great tourism product uh, it revived itself simply because of these great guides that we had done. So we brought back a lot of unique products. We brought back the traditional Kerala houseboats, which were once being used as uh, rice boats, uh, and on which not a single nail is used. The traditional carpenters had gone away to the Gulf countries. We brought them back and started them, and these became the new houseboats of Kerala. We opened up the backwaters of Kerala, which are the most fascinating water channels anywhere in the world, which had never been used as a tourism product. We opened up, uh, we brought back the traditional Ayurveda, not as a massage, but as a regimen, and which brought huge life to Kerala for a long period of time. And uh, I think we did some unique products, like the tree huts, etc., and uh, one of the key focus of this entire strategy of new products was that we will, whatever we do, we'll do it on carrying capacity and we'll not allow any single construction to be higher than the size of coconut tree. So whether it was backwaters, whether it was houseboats, whether it was monar, everything was based on carrying capacity. And we demonstrated that actually high value tourism, not mass tourism, but high value tourism actually uh, gives you higher returns, it gives you more value. But what people of high value want is great experiences, which is extremely responsible in nature. And therefore, you have to create responsible products. And on the supply side, a vast number of responsible products need to be built, which bring on the traditional and the original ethos and the authentic ethos of a destination. And whatever you do, the world is looking to what the destination and what experience you can create there. And therefore, the world of tourism is about experiences. It's about, it's about experiential tourism. And experiential tourism is about responsible tourism. And it's important to say this because 
India will be confronted with huge urbanization issues. The world of urbanization, uh, you know, it's ended across America, it's ending across Europe, it's nearing its completion in China, but in India it's just begun. So, if you go by the latest McKinsey study, by 2050 you'll have 700 million Indians getting into the process of urbanization. I mean, every minute as I speak here today, there are 30 Indians who are moving from rural areas to urban areas. When America urbanized, land, gas, and water were cheaply available, and because they were cheaply available, Americans had the luxury of creating cities like Atlanta where 99% of the people, 99.9% .9 of the people travel by cars. Nobody walks, nobody cycles. They all travel by cars, so they created, I mean, you could live in New Jersey, travel to New York, guzzle gas, you could cool, build big limousines. Uh, because gas was available, you could guzzle cheaply available gas. Now, all these are scarce commodities. So you can't have the American model of urbanization anymore. You need more compact, dense, uh, you need to recycle every, uh, you need more livable urbanization, you need to uh, recycle every drop of water, you need to, uh, you know, ensure that you are able to segregate at the household level waste and then uh, utilize that waste for better purposes. I mean, it has huge en energy potential to be able to utilize. And in the interim period, you have many entrepreneurs have done some remarkable work in terms of uh, innovation in many of these areas. And I think huge amount of possibility and potential exists for responsible tourism. This is the only way forward. And what Ram Kumar's book, The Green Dreams, reveals is that actually being responsible destination or creating a responsible tourism product makes good business. It's good economics. Uh, it's the chances of you getting higher unit value responsible from responsible tourism because the world is looking for experiential tourism is much more, much higher, and that the world will pay you much more, and therefore, economically and commercially, it's better to do sustainable business. And what he says is that it is profitable business to be a responsible, uh, to create a responsible product. And this is what Green Dreams is all about. And therefore, my compliments to Ram Kumar for writing all his experiences so that we can all learn. It's, it's a very readable book. You can probably read it in a one or two hours and you'll greatly benefit from it. And I've known Ram Kumar for a long while, ever since I was doing Incredible India. I met him in Bangalore and I was very fascinated with the story of our native village, of taking ba people back to his native village and creating a unique experience. There are very few entrepreneurs like him. Everybody wants to do what the Western world wants. Everybody wants to replicate what the, uh, you know, what the Western traveler wants, but they don't realize that actually Western traveler is fed up of uh, uh, the same five-star hotel, the same Marriott's, and the same Radisson's. They want a different experience. And that different experience is what Ram Kumar is able to provide and give you that experience through his book. So I compliment him and I compliment uh, the Outlook Group for this very unique initiative of responsible tourism. They have all my support. I'm fully behind them. I would have loved to stay back for the award, but I have to go for a uh, for a MRI checkup. So my apologies for that, but I wish them all the best, and I wish all the participants here all success. Many of you have done some very unique work in your different areas of growth. Uh, you've come from different parts of the world. You've come from some of you have come from Nepal. Some of you have come from uh, what I would term as great uh, rural and village tourism products. And you've, you're great entrepreneurs. All of you are great entrepreneurs in many, many ways. And actually, India is proud of all of you. And we are extremely proud that the responsible uh, tourism movement has taken a big jump forward, a big leap forward, thanks to the Outlook uh, Traveler Group. And I wish it all success, and I wish it all progress, and I wish it great energy, vibrancy, and dynamism. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.